Hello everyone and welcome to Mixbus TV, mixing and mastering tutorials on YouTube. Today I'm going to show you how I set up my uh, mixing template for a basic rock band recording mixing. So there's going to be drums, guitars, bass, uh, vocals and effects, and my master bus. Hopefully this is going to be useful to see how to set up a, a mix in terms of uh, routing and grouping and my master bus too. So at the top of my session, I keep my drums. So these green tracks are all my drum tracks. And uh, once I created them, I recorded the drum, I grouped the tracks and I call the group drums. This is useful because not only because you can move, you know, the fader all at once and everything, but also if the session gets kind of big like this, even with the basic setup like that, you can right click on the group and decide to hide the tracks to show the tracks on, or to show only the tracks in the group. So with one click, you just have your drum. It's pretty useful. My drum tracks are routed to my drum bus, which is an aux track. And it's this, and as you can see, it's black. So to do that, just select the color, none, and it becomes black. Now we'll see later on why this is useful and why I do it that way. So the input of this stereo aux track is drum bus, which is the same as the output or all the, uh, the, uh, the green tracks. Now, then we have a, a parallel drum, which I use pretty much on every mix as an input that of course is routed and it's called X drum. And this one goes to my drum bus too. So, during the mix, I decide what to send here in the parallel drum bus. Could be just a kick, could be just a snare, could be overheads and kick and snare. We'll, we'll have an episode uh, specifically talking about the, the drum parallel bus and how to use it and in how many ways, really, you can use it to, to achieve um, many different sounds. So after that, I keep my two uh, verbs for the drum. I know I will use them. One is mono, and I call it MTS, which is mono to stereo, because I know most likely I will send it the snare drum here. So I will need a mono to stereo verb. And then I have a stereo room. Now this... I could use it, I cannot, it depends how good the the tracked stereo room are, or I can add it, but usually these two verbs are present in my mixes. One thing to notice is this, um, up here you can see this lighter green track, which is not an audio track, it's an aux track, it's a mono aux track, and what I use it for is my snare top and bottom once i track them i sum them to this bus to this mono bus because i don't want to treat these two mics especially equalize them um singularly because that creates phase issues um if you should use a linear eq uh a linear phase EQ to equalize multi mic sources anyway. We'll talk probably about this later on. But anyway, for now, just just know that I like to bust them and process them as one track. So I send my snare top and snare bottom to my snare sum, which is an aux track, and the snare sum goes to the drum bus. So as you can see, the output of these two snare track are routed to the snare sum. So moving on, we have a bass, usually it's one track. Um, 
this is an audio track. Here is where I will record the bass. And the bass is routed to this bus out, which is an aux track. And this is routed to my mix bus. Uh, one thing I didn't say is the drum bus, it goes to my mix bus. We'll see later on all the tracks that goes all the tracks that go to my mix bus. For now, we have the drum bus and the bus out. They all go to the mix bus. Then my guitars, you know, usually I have three guitars, two mics for each. So we have one pass left, one pass right, and a third guitar that I keep in the template just, you know, for solos or some other third guitar part or whatever. These purple guitars are also grouped together in the guitar group. So again, I can only show those hide and it's easy. Guitars go to the guitar out. Another bus, another black bus that goes to the mix bus. So Every single guitar track is routed to guitar out bus and the guitar out bus, which is a stereo aux track, goes to my mix bus. Then we have verse, vocals, and chorus vocals. So the, these are my vocals. Um, usually one track for the verse and one track for the chorus is not enough, but I start this way. I use playlists if I have to. Uh, track more than one version, more than one, you know, take, and then comp them and use these two. These two are grouped together again in the Vox group and routed to my lead Vox out, which is routed to my mix bus. Then I have these yellow tracks, which are not enabled and I keep them for background vocals. If I need them, I enable them, they're there. Then I have my FX out that goes to my mix bus. And here, my FX out are routed, all my effects, which are these bluish track. I keep them here and I activate them as I need. So I have a mono verb, a mono delay, and mono to stereo room, plate, hall, uh, delays, stereo verbs, and saturation. These are all aux tracks. Some are mono, some are stereo. And again, I will activate them as I need. Now, here we are at the master section. So this is my mix bus. This is a master track. And the input of this track is my mix bus. So all my groups, all my main groups that I call stem are routed to my mix bus. So my drums, guitars, effects, bass and vocals. So these are all the black aux track. So if I right click on it, click on it and, and I show only tracks in group, as you can see, I can, I can see only my main output tracks. So drum, bass, guitars, lead vocals, and effects. And this is also useful if you have to print stems. So you can solo each one and print just the drum, just the bass, just the vocals, instrumental version, whatever. And this is the last par part where the mix bus, this is a master fader, so the input we said is set to mix bus. And then I have a Nox track. Here is where I monitor my output, my, my whole mix. And as you can see, the, the input is the mix bus, is the same. And the output is my main output. 
now I'm at home, I'm studio, I don't have my SSL, so I just have my Mbox, and my main out is stereo one, two. While I monitor the mix, while I work on the mix, I will make this send inactive. And this send is where I print the mix. This, as you can see, is a send pre-fader, and it goes to this track down here. Input is set to mix print, and output is set to main out. So when I print the mix, I will mute this track, because the send is pre-fader, so it won't matter. I record enable the track, and I will print my mix. Now the reason to do that is not because it's better to print the mix inside Pro Tools compared to the bounce to disk. It's just because, you know, if I want to stop in the middle or just adjust something on the fly, I can do that. I like this better. So again, my mix bus is a master fader. Master fader is monitored by this aux stereo track, which is which has mix bus as an input and main out as an output. Ascend pre-fader during the mix is disabled, and when I'm ready to print the mix, I'll make it active, mute this track, and record enable, and print my mix. So that's my basic rock band mixing template and we touched a few points that we will explore more in depth later on in other videos and if you have any questions feel free to ask i hope this was useful please like and subscribe and see you next time